This is a tour of Carnival Celebration. Starting out, let's take a look at some of Carnival Celebration's facts. This is one of the largest Carnival Cruise Line ships built to date at 183,521 gross registered tons. It's 1,130 feet long, has a cruising speed of 17 knots, 15 passenger decks, carries 6,631 guests at full capacity, and a crew of 1,735. Now, you will embark Celebration on Deck 6, which brings you into Celebration Central. But today, we're going to start the tour on the very first passenger deck, which is Deck 4. Deck 3 is kind of for passengers. It's a limited traffic area with the medical center down there and also where you'll disembark on some ports of call. Otherwise, no staterooms or anything down there on Deck 3. Now, Deck 4 is where you'll find a variety of cabin types, including the Family Harbor staterooms, which are specifically designed for the needs of the families traveling with kids in mind. These staterooms offer a privacy curtain, a separate bathroom and changing room, and access to the Family Harbor Lounge, which is a spot where kids can and hang out, play video games, fill up on soda if they have the soda card, and take advantage of those ice cream machines. Carnival's kids program, Camp Ocean, and Dr. Seuss's Bookville, also down here on 4 as well. Otherwise, not much shaking down here aside from those family harbor and some regular state rooms. Like Deck 4, Deck 5 is mostly state rooms, but also found on Deck 5 are those cove balconies, which is the closest balcony to the water line. Although it's, uh, if the weather gets too rough, they're going to actually close the hatch to that balcony, so you won't really have a balcony. It'd be more like an ocean view cabin. But long as you have nice weather, it's a really cool spot. Uh, we had ours on the very forward part of the port side of the ship and had some pretty inclement weather on the transatlantic crossing. And it was really neat watching everything and being so close to the waves and all that. Up to deck six, though, that's where a lot of the action starts. At the front of the ship, you have the two-deck Mardi Gras Theater, which is deck six and seven. The theater hosts shows, uh, Family Feud, the game show, the military appreciation gathering, and some short talks, and other things around the ship as well will be held in this theater as well. Now, the main entrance is located up on deck seven, but there is a passageway to enter on deck six, and that's by the spa, so it'll be on the starboard side of deck six. The Cloud Nine Spa is on the forward starboard starboard side of the ship, and the spa has a thermal suite inside of it with a mineral pool, steam room, sauna, heated tile, thermal chairs. And outside of the thermal area, there's a lot of those treatment rooms, uh, relaxation room, the salon for pedicures, manicures, um, and all the bamboo massages, Botox, whatever you want, you can pretty much do in here. The spa is interesting because although the reception area is here on deck six, everything else is down on five, but you have to enter the spa on deck six. There's no entrance on deck five. You have to take the steps down or this ADA compliant elevator. Also, if you're in a cloud nine spa stateroom up on deck 17, there's a direct elevator. It's only available to you, the cloud nine occupant, and that'll take you from deck 17 straight on down to the cloud nine spa. So that's nice as well. If you're wondering about the price for the Thermal Suite Pass, it varies on sailing. They fluctuate, but somewhere between 169 to 199 per person for seven nights. And of course, they have a couple's pass, which normally saves you $100 or so. Just opposite of the Cloud9 Spa is the Fitness Center. This is your basic gym that you'll find on almost every cruise ship with a row of cardio machines, upper and lower body equipment, and free weights. Also a workout studio in here as well where they have classes. Now, if you're leaving the gym, you come across a bank of elevators. On Carnival Celebration, there are three different banks of elevators. There's forward and midship, which each have eight elevators. And then the aft bank of elevators has six. Continuing our walk on deck six, we'll hit the Punchliner Comedy Club. Now, on most Carnival ships, the Punchliner shows take place in the Limelight Lounge. So it's nice to see them actually giving the comedy shows their own home here on Celebration, which they also did on Mardi Gras, in fact. The Punchliner Comedy Club here on Celebration has 30 more seats than Mardi Gras. There's a big, beautiful mural on the wall with both the original version of the MS Celebration from back in the 80s and the new ship as well, allowing you just to kind of compare and see how big these ships are compared to each other. You'll also find the ship's coin here. Right across from the Punchliner Comedy Club is the piano bar, your typical piano bar here. It's a little bit larger than what you'll find on, say, a Vista class ship, but not by too much. The piano bar was a very popular spot on our sailing, hopping very late into the evening or into the wee hours of the morning sometimes. There's also a decent-sized bar in here as well. 
All right, now we walk into Celebration Central, the AKA atrium. This is the heart of the ship where it really comes alive. You'll find the side facing atrium, although it's different from what you'll see on other carnival ships, because on other carnival ships, there's a, what, a center atrium. This one actually faces the starboard side of the ship and serves almost a second theater at nighttime with several different shows taking place here as well. A lot of acrobatic shows and some new exclusive only to Celebration shows here. Now, during the day, it's much quieter and a great place to watch the ocean go by with these stunning three-story panes of glass here. And then by night, of course, it turns into uh, a show place, a variety shows, what have you. They basically use the main theater and Celebration Central to divide the crowds at night. The Tropical Bar is also located on Deck 6, which is your typical atrium bar. And then there's the Java Blue Cafe, which is easily double or triple the size of other Java Blue Cafes you'll find on previous classes of ship. And with the amount of guests that Carnival Celebration holds, like, you know, over 6,000 full capacity, very smart move, making it a lot larger here. There's a grab and go cooler also in the morning and afternoon with uh, like cereals, fruits, uh, salads and stuff. And also you have the donuts that are three dollars each and then a spot for sandwiches and finger foods. Now, the grab and go and sandwiches, finger foods are all included in the price of your cruise. However, the donuts and the uh, nut muffins, I guess they are muffins, cupcakes, maybe are three dollars each. Each. And as I mentioned earlier, this is where you'll embark celebration from one of the two gangways here off of six. Walking aft or towards the back of the ship from Celebration Central, you'll find yourself entering the Gateway Zone. This is where you're met with that Rolls Royce that was taken from Carnival Ecstasy earlier in 2022. This really sets the stage for what you're going to experience in this zone. Almost everything in the Gateway Zone is new to Carnival, including this very cool Golden Jubilee Bar. The Gateway Zone is much different than the New Orleans-themed uh, French Corridor on Carnival's Mardi Gras. In the same spot, but things are a little tweaked, different bar names, and uh, they modify different areas as well. For instance, um, right here in the Golden Jubilee on Mardi Gras, this was called the Brass Magnolia. And two changes they did. They made this a little smaller to expand the midship main dining room a little bit to add an extra section. And they also move the stage um, in this space as well from far against the wall to kind of more towards the entrance to make it better for line of sight. But the menu here in Golden Jubilee serves a lot of drinks of Carnival's past. For instance, the one I always grabbed was called the Yellow Bird. Now, just past the Golden Jubilee is the Carnival Restaurant, which is the first of two main dining rooms on board. This one is a single floor main dining room compared to the aft one on deck six and seven, the Festival, which is two decks. But Carnival does still offer the set time dining, like 5.30 and 8.15, I believe, and also the anytime dining. And you can check into anytime dining on the app. So very important you download the app before you board the ship. A lot of stuff is actually integrated into the app. The Gateway Zone is also where you'll find the new bar called Latitudes. And this is kind of a bar. Think of everything travel and different drinks named after different things like the Singapore Sling is in there. Uh, for Italy, they have the Aperol Spritz. And there's really cool departure board right above the, uh, the bar. And it's, I guess, a flip board, they call it where you'll find a like, picture like old train stations. Well, you see it right here, or old airports. I think the TWA terminal had one in, uh, at JFK as well. But a really cool, chill spot here with lots of extra seating. Inside this zone, you'll also find Emerald's Bistro 1397, created in partnership with celebrity chef Emerald Lagasse. This is an a la carte venue, so it does cost extra per dish. The average dish, somewhere around 5 or $6 per item, could be a little more, could be a little less, depending on what you order. And the seafood here is market price, like the uh, New Orleans oysters and shrimp and things like that. Emerald's is interesting because it's a hybrid of quick service and table service. So it, you order at the register, they give you a number, and then they bring it out to you. And you have bar service and water service right there at your table from the server. And continuing our walk back, you'll find that spiral staircase that goes up to deck seven and deck eight. And then on the other side is Carnival Kitchen. This is the space where Carnival's chefs offer hands-on cooking demonstrations for a fee. So far, I've seen folks doing sushi rolling, backyard barbecue, ice cream making, and dessert baking, also pasta making in here. The average price was somewhere around $60 per person here. These classes fill up super duper fast. So if you want to do a hands-on cooking demonstration, you'll want to make sure you book it well in advance and definitely before your cruise. 
Behind Carnival Kitchen is that aft elevator bank and stairs in case you're feeling a little extra motivated to do a little walking. And then in the very back of the ship, you have the aft main dining room. As I mentioned earlier, this spans two decks, decks six and seven. And they got really creative with the lighting design here in the main dining room. They actually have these lights inset into the floor. It makes the space feel larger than what it really is. And the architecture really stands out with these lights shining up on the, uh, the beams and the poles. Moving up to Deck 7, we'll start forward in the Grand Spectrum Theater, which is also the theater name on the original Celebration. And as I mentioned, you have a lot of shows done in here. Now, the casino on this ship is absolutely huge. In fact, if you want to enter the theater on Deck 7, you have really no choice but to walk through the casino, which is just massive. Seriously, it's one of the biggest I've ever seen, aside from Mardi Gras, because it's the same design, taking up like half the Deck of 7. When I was on Mardi Gras, the ship's designer had told me the casino is somewhere around 30% larger than the casinos on the Vista class. So they're just that much larger. They also did an excellent job with the firewalls and breaking up the smoking and non-smoking area. If you're in the non-smoking area, you can't even tell that there's smoking in this casino. It's I'm very sensitive to cigarette smoke, and I couldn't even tell. Now, if you're on the smoking side, you definitely can tell it's a smoking side. But the non-smoking side, yeah, it's they did a really good job. I don't know how they're doing that, but the filtration is like up 10 notches from other ships. Along Celebration Central is the second deck of the atrium here with some access to stadium-style seating and some bars and other seating along the area here just outside of the casino for watching the shows. Um, the Aquaria Bar is also here, which is... On Mardi Gras, it's kind of like that waterfall-looking bar, lots of blues. On this one, they took a lot of the artwork from the main promenade of Carnival Victory and added a lot of light design to it, and it really sticks out and really pops, as you see here. So this is kind of like uh, a Deck 7 bar outside of the casino. Leaving Celebration Central and walking aft, you'll come across one of those Carnival fun shops that has the logo gear, the ship models, and the things like that. Other shops along this little promenade stroll as well. And then you come up to the Alchemy Bar. You're overlooking the Latitude Bar down below from right here. But as you keep walking aft, you have the Alchemy Bar, which is easily double or maybe even triple other Alchemy Bars on Carnival ships. On the other side of this wall here where the Alchemy Bar is, you have the Limelight Lounge. That's also the nightclub. Uh, they do some trivia in here and different things throughout the day. And then making your way aft, you come across some extra seating that has about four or five booths here that can hold four people each or so. And then some tables along the railing overlooking Deck 6 and the light show that happens along this space at nighttime. Really cool light show too, by the way. They have those virtual, um, virtual windows, we'll call them, with different kinds of scenes going throughout the day on there, reminiscent of a promenade at light show like MSC Cruises has. Keep walking aft, you'll come up on another spiral staircase here, and then you have the Fahrenheit 555 Steakhouse. Now, one thing they added to this space that I really loved is a horseshoe bar at the entrance to the steakhouse. Now, on other Carnival ships, the Steakhouse Bar maybe has room for four or five people max, but the Celebration and Mardi Gras too plenty of seating in this space. In fact, you don't need a reservation at the steakhouse to grab a drink here. But I suspect a lot of people actually think you need a reservation because it's pretty quiet as you walk by. Um, but anyone can grab a drink here. It's a nice little place to have a pre-dinner cocktail and take the steps down to deck number six if that's what you're eating for that night. So really nice space here. And speaking of the steakhouse, trust me when I say that if eating here is on your to-do list, Make a reservation as soon as possible. They do book up really fast, and it's definitely worth the cost of admission. Just opposite of Fahrenheit 555 Steakhouse is Dream Studios. This is part of the Pixels Photo Gallery, and it's where you can take those, um, I guess, special event photos if you're doing like a, a wedding, an anniversary, something like that. You can plan out those special shoots right here. And then you dead end into the Festival Main Dining Room which is essentially a carbon copy of Deck 6. Going on to Deck 8 is where you'll find the Summer Landing Zone. This is the very back of Deck 8, and it features a sprawling area called the Patio. There's lots of comfortable seating out here, and one of the ship's four pools located back here at Deck 8 aft as well. This area is great, especially early on in the cruise, because it takes a little while for people to discover it. I guess people are just used to ships only having one pool, and that's on the Lido deck. So that's what they typically gravitate towards, but not on Celebration or Mardi Gras. 
On the starboard side aft, there's another new to Carnival venue called the Watering Hole, also on Mardi Gras, though. It serves up refreshing drinks made with fresh fruits like watermelon. You also have another pool out here, more like a really big hot tub, but it's another place to, to soak if you want to. On the port side is where Guy's Pig and Anchor serves up complimentary lunch. It's usually open for two to three hours each afternoon, but you'll want to check your hub app just to make sure you catch it at the right time. The summer landing zone also extends inside where you'll find the main Pig and Anchor Smokehouse brew house space, including a, a bar here and also a stage where they play some music at nighttime. Across from this space is the Heroes Tribute Lounge, which is dedicated to the past and present military personnel and their families. You'll also find two ice cream machines located in this area as well. However, late at night, they are shut off after 11 o'clock, so don't even try it. Both the guest services desk and also the shore excursions desks are back here just outside of Guy's Smokehouse. And another fun shop is back here as well for logo gear. This one's a little bit larger than the one um, midship on deck seven. Walking forward from here, we come to Rudy's Sea Grill, another new to Carnival specialty venue. The first one was put on Mardi Gras last year. This is about a two hour dining experience. Very fresh seafood. I went with the halibut and the stuffed lobster, and I think I did the crab cakes and maybe calamari. It was all amazing. I would definitely compare it to a, a landside venue, and especially like living on the coast here in Jacksonville, Florida. Com very comparable. It's like local fresh seafood. I don't, I don't know how they do it because it's, it's on a cruise ship, but props to them. Now, outside of Rudy's, you'll see that staircase again. That'll take you down to deck six and seven. Keep walking straight, and you are in another zone called 820 Biscayne, where you'll find all things Miami, I guess, including the two grab-and-go food venues, Deco Deli and Miami Slice Pizza. Basically the same as Carnival Deli and Pizzeria Del Capitano just with extra cute Miami names. So we have that going on. Bar 820 is a nice little bar that specializes in Miami-themed drinks and coffees. Another alternative here, if, if you don't want to wait in a very long line sometimes at the Java Blue Cafe for your morning coffee, um, you can come here and get like espressos, lattes, things like that up here. This bar also has a nice-sized outdoor seating area. And this is also where the smoking area is out on Deck 8 on the starboard side on the Lanai. Across from Bar 820 is Cucina del Capitano, as we were just speaking of, a very popular sit-down Italian venue that serves lunch and dinner. Now, on other carnival ships, aside from Mardi Gras, this venue actually costs money for dinner time. But here, on Celebration, it's included in the price of your cruise. Guests at Cucina can order selections from the main dining room menu as well. For instance, if it's lobster night, like a formal night, and you want to eat in here and get the lobster, you can do that instead, uh, especially how crazy the main dining room gets on lobster night. It really works out. Continuing forward, you'll walk through Pixel's photo gallery where you can get those pictures you have been taking throughout your entire cruise. And then you come to the top deck of the Celebration Central area. So again, it spans six, seven, and eight. For dining in this area, you'll find bonsai sushi and bonsai teppanyaki. Now, if you want to do the whole teppanyaki experience, make reservations as far in advance as possible. They started offering lunch here during our sailing, and the reservations went super fast. In fact, we lucked out and got the very last two for lunch. And then we already had a dinner pre-booked here as well. Same price, same menu, um, same experience, really. Just, you know, being a little pig and eating teppanyaki twice, I guess. Continuing to move forward, we come to sort of a fork in the path here, veer to the port side, and you'll have the Havana Bar and Retreat. Now, while the bar is open to anyone and features like late night Latin bands and karaoke, the Havana Retreat is only available to guests who are booked in Havana staterooms here on Deck 8. Now, opposite of the Havana area is Chebang, yet another fairly new to Carnival venue. This place is perfect if half your party wants Chinese and half your party wants Mexican, as this menu offers best of both the worlds and best of all, it's included in the price of your cruise. As I mentioned earlier with Cucina del Capitano, you can also order select items from the main dining room here in Chebang as well. So again, lobster for formal night right here if you don't want to go into the main dining room. And then forward of Chebang, you'll find more of those Havana staterooms. Decks 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, and 15 are all stateroom decks. And if you're keeping track at home, there's 2,687 staterooms on board Carnival Celebration. 
So that takes us up to deck number 16. Also, I should probably mention, like other Carnival ships, there is no deck number 13 on this ship as well. The front third of deck 16 is nothing but more staterooms, but then we come to the next zone, the Lido. Now, obviously, this is the main pool area, but the first thing you come across here is a variety of food options. To the right is Street Eats with complimentary food truck concepts here with three different kiosks serving up small plates of food Almost like tapas, I guess you could say. And you have the seafood shack here as well. Now, that is a la carte, so there is a charge for the seafood shack, but the other three items are included in the price of your cruise. Just to the opposite side, though, you have the Blue Iguana Cantina, which serves burritos and tacos for lunch, and also a killer breakfast burrito in the morning. Anchoring the Lido deck is something new to Carnival that was first introduced on Mardi Gras, the two-deck Red Frog Tiki Bar. And that's found on 16 and 17. Same menu, same vibe, just the lazy people stay down on 16, and the people who want to Work out a little bit. We'll walk up to 17 to get that drink. It's always less crowded up there on 17, too, in my personal experience. Walking inside the Lido Deck Marketplace, you have a lot of these little islands where you can find your food. Also, some more kiosks in here. Uh, in here. There are sea dogs, uh, swarma, which is meat on a stick or meat on a wheel, and gelato. Walking aft on Lido, the second buffet section mirrors the forward part. And then walk into the very back of the ship, you'll find Shaq's counter service venue, Big Chicken. Now, there's both a breakfast and a lunch menu here with breakfast served until like 3 p.m. So it's a, a late breakfast there. It starts as early as 7 as well. The honey chicken sandwich for breakfast, amazing. And on the other side, you have the Tide's pool bar for a drink. And you can also hit up the set of ice cream machines there as well. Of course, those are on until 11 p.m. Then Carnival shuts those right on down. The aft pool back here also has two hot tubs on either side. Also loungers back here for the sun lovers. Up to deck number 17, it has a whole lot of lounge chairs that overlook both the Tide's pool on the aft end and the Lido pool towards the middle of the ship. Also making it a good place if you want to watch the action, but maybe not get right into the middle of it all. There is also a smoking area on the aft starboard side up here on 17. You'll find the second level of the Tiki Bar up here, as we mentioned, and right behind it is Guy's Burger Joint. Now, this is usually located down by the pool, so don't let it throw you off. And on the port side on deck 17 is where you'll find the teen area called Club 02. That's ages 15 to 17. Really nice, has really a cool loungy feel around here. And then on the starboard side is Circle C, which is for kids between 12 and 14. And then just beyond that, kind of in the middle, is the Warehouse Arcade. Forward of the pool on deck number 17 are those Cloud 9 spa state rooms. And as we mentioned at the front of this, that has the elevator. So if you want to go down to the spa from deck 17, you have a dedicated elevator that basically goes between 17 and deck 6 all day long. Deck 18 is essentially split in half. On the aft portion, you'll have the ultimate playground zone. This is where you'll find the miniature golf course, basketball court, jogging track, and other things to play. Uh, like, uh, what's that game called? I think foosball. Deck 18 is also where you'll check in for Bolt, which is the ultimate roller coaster at sea. Not the first one. That was on Sister Ship Mardi Gras. But this is the second one at sea. As of December 2022, Bolt was $15 for two times around the track. And Deck 18 Forward is the adults-only Serenity Deck. This is the rest and relaxation spot for those who want to escape the music by the pool and see the activities of the Lido Deck. Serenity on the Excel class ships differ from the ones on the Vista class because there's a decent-sized pool up here, as well as two hot tubs. You'll also find the Serenity Bar and on Sea Days, Fresh Creations, which is a salad bar. There is a lot of space up here, and by the pool, there is some shade. Otherwise, not a whole lot of shade happening in and around the spot. Not much of a water connection either. A lot of nice breeze happening up here on Deck 18, but you kind of have to look over if you want to see the water because there's these big panes of glass which blocks the wind on those sea days. And while we're up here in Serenity, we'll go up one more deck to Loft 19, the bougie area. Yeah, that's where if you're staying in one of the Excel suites, you have a pass to come up here throughout the week. If you're not staying in the Excel suites, you're able to rent a cabana for the very affordable price of $2,000 per week. I say that with sarcasm, but it's about that price. So, But aside from those $2,000 cabanas, there are a lot of loungers up here and... 
There's not a bar up here, but there is bar service. So it's kind of like Serenity, but just elevated a little bit and not as many people. Now we'll move to the back of the ship where we save the best for last, Bolt the Ultimate Sea Coaster. This circles the back end of the ship from the funnel all the way aft. And to have access to this coaster, as I mentioned, you have to do it down on deck number 18. Take the stairs up here to 19, and this is where you'll board. A couple of things to know before you set sail on Carnival Celebration. First and foremost, definitely download the Hub app. It'll be a crucial part of your cruise experience. I mean, even if you do pick up the what's happening piece of paper from guest services, venues do change throughout the cruise. So you could be going to the wrong place for trivia or the show or whatnot. Also make those dining reservations early. And finally, study the deck plans. That'll be a crucial part of your experience, especially if you haven't sailed Mardi Gras before. My first time sailing Mardi Gras, I was trying to figure out where in the hell I was the past three days or so of the cruise because I couldn't get forward and aft and port and starboard because it was uh, very different. We'll say that much. So make sure you study those deck plans. If this video helped you in the least bit, if you don't mind giving it a thumbs up, I sure would appreciate it. It helps the video rank in the algorithm. And leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think of Carnival Celebration. Hey, it's Doug Parker, and thanks for watching the Cruise Radio YouTube channel. You can find more interviews, ship tours, and stories by subscribing to our channel. And as always, breaking news at cruiseradio.net. Thank you so much for watching.